Hi everyone, welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial you will learn how to do empirical formula and we will try to find out the empirical formula of substance based on the information given right here. Uh, there are two methods to do this and uh, for this tutorial I'm going to teach you the method that most students will learn in the classroom. This is a very procedural method and uh, what I would like you to do is as we walk through the steps, the procedures, I would like you to understand the meaning of each process because by understanding the meaning of the process, the entire procedure will make sense to you and you will not be confused when to do what and uh, why do we do this. So let's start it. Let's get started on this problem. So we have two percent composition. Uh, one is the percent composition of the carbon, the other is the percent composition of the oxygen. So how are we going to make use of these two percentages and find out the chemical formula? Now one of the basic understanding of uh, empirical formula is that you have to understand that it uh, compounds composed of some elements and in here we have carbon and oxygen. And for a compound there is a fixed ratio in terms of the quantity. Okay, and uh, we will see how we make use of the concept of the fixed ratio of the quantity to, uh, <coughs> to, to find out the chemical formula. Now, we are given the two percentages, and the first thing that you have to understand about these two percentages is that when we talk about percentages, we are talking about ratios, and it is very relative and is not absolute at all. But when we talk about the comparison of quantity, we would like to have, uh, we would like to compare in the absolute quantity, one to two, two to one, three to two, this kind of absolute ratios. So, um, and when we talk about percent composition, it is about the percent composition by mass. It's not by quantity. It's by mass in terms of the molar mass or the grams that's given. So we have to somehow make use of the percentages, percentages and convert it to some kind of quantity. So let's get started. So what we would do first is that we are going to assume that there are 100 grams of the compound. Now you may ask why do we have to assume something like this and why do we use 100 grams not 1000, not 10, or 5? Well this is the reason. When we assume 100 grams of the compound, so this is what happens. When we have 100 grams of the compound, and within this 100 grams of the compound, we have 27.27% of the carbon. So if we, if we calculate this, what we will get is 27.27 grams of the carbon. So by using 100 grams, we can simply convert the sign from percentage to grams. This is very simple. We could use other numbers like a thousand or actually whatever number you can think of, but that would require you to do one more step that you may need to put a calculator. So to make things easier, we are going to assume 100 grams for this purpose. And, uh, and we have the same uh, calculation for the oxygen. So we have 72.7% of oxygen times uh, 100 grams of the compound and we have 72.73 per, uh, grams of the oxygen. So one thing you can, one way to think about this is that if you have a compound and I'm going to use a pie chart to uh, represent the compound, the whole thing is 100 grams. So about 27%, 27.27% of that is for carbon and then oxygen would occupy the remaining 72.73% or in other way to say it is 27.27 grams since it is out of 100 grams or 72.73 grams so hopefully you understand why we use 100 grams at the very beginning next we have grams and going back to what I've said at the very beginning is that we would like to compare the quantity. We would like to see the ratio between these two elements. That means we have to convert it to some kind of quantity. So the easiest way to do this from grams is that, well, we can use the molar mass to, co to change uh, the number here from mass 
to quantity. So let's do this. And I'm going to use a different color so that you can see it easier. Multiply by one mole of carbon, 12 grams of carbon. Okay? And now let me use my calculator. And when we do the division, we will have 2.27. We have 2.27 moles of carbon. And we would do the same for oxygen. So we would multiply by the molar mass. One mole of oxygen over 16 grams of oxygen. So let's see what we would get. 72.73 grams divided by 16 grams. We have 4.55 mole of oxygen. So out of this 72.73 grams of oxygen, we have 4.55 moles of oxygen. Now, we have the two quantities. And what do we do next? Well, we, what we would do next is to try to compare. Uh, the way we compare is that uh, we are going to divide by the smallest number of uh, these two. So, since this is the smallest number, so we would divide that. Okay. And what you would get is this. Okay. Now, when you put in the calculator, this may not turn out to be an exact number like 2. It will be a 1 point. Uh, let me put in my calculator and see. It would turn out to be 2.0044, which is a number very close to 2. And then we will round it to the nearest integer. Now, the reason why we are rounding, the reason why we are dividing by the smallest number is for this reason. The reason is, well, for a compound, okay, for a compound, it has these two elements. And uh, the smallest possible subscript of the element is going to be 1. Because there is the element and we know that the subscript must be a whole number. So this, the one that has the smallest quantity must at least to have number 1. So, so this is the reason why we divide by 2. Uh, divide by 2.27 because it's the smallest number and we will get the subscript of 1 carbon and 2 oxygen. And what do we do next here? Well, because we have this ratio, we can do, we will find out that for this compound, it has one carbon and two oxygen. So, based on the information given at the very beginning, we will have uh, a compound CO2. So, this is how we calculate the empirical formula, find out the, empir uh, the empirical formula of a compound from the percent composition. Now later on you will see a tutorial that is, uh, that is that will give you the mass of the compound, of the element instead of the percent composition. In that way it's actually easier because you don't have to assume for 100 grams. You have the grams already. So in the next tutorial you will see how it is being applied in, uh, in such um, in, in how, how the concept is being applied to find out the empirical formula.